What's up, family? It's your favorite cousin back again with episode 20 of Rich Talks. Yes, 20 days, 20 days. And today we're going to talk about the wisdom of uncertainty. Again, the wisdom of uncertainty. Why you should lean more on being uncertain about things instead of trying to have everything figured out. A lot of us crave stability, myself included, I crave stability. Even though I'm in unstable times at times, because I'm building, I'm building towards stability. But the times that I'm building is during times of uncertainty. Uncertain about a lot of things, you know? But sometimes you have to go through that uncertainty to get to where you want to go. See, a lot of times we try to have everything figured out. We want to have that control, which is honorable if it's done in a righteous way. Because you want to be safe, secure, stable. Not because you're trying to control somebody. But I think that's for a conversation for a different day. We're talking about just, you know, livelihood, that type of stability. There's nothing wrong with that. So, why is there wisdom in being uncertain? Because when you're uncertain, that's when life can really take place. That's when you allow. See, when you're uncertain about certain things, when you're uncertain about how things may take place, you don't really have any expectations. You know, you just let life, life, you let it take you as the breeze goes. And you'll learn at that point. That's when, if you trust the universe, more beautiful things can come in. What if you only imagined for, you know, five things to happen, and yet you went down an uncertain road and you let the universe take control, and now you have 10 things, you see? Just that easy because you took a step back and you let the universe you know, grant you something, if that makes sense, because you weren't in your own way. See, when you're uncertain about things, you're not in your own way, because you release control. Uncertainty can lead to a path of freedom. Why can it lead to a path of freedom? Because when you're not uncertain, when you're so gun ho on the path that you're going, you're not allowing yourself to live. You're not allowing yourself to see. You're not allowing yourself to embrace life completely when you're so gun ho on, you know, where you're going. When you try to have understanding on everything. When you're uncertain, you just let life take you as it goes. You get to embrace more of life. You get to see more life. Because the universe is going to bring more things in. But like I said, when you're on that path of just straight and narrow, just trying to stay super, super focused, you miss out on a lot of things. You're not free. Because you're tied to this 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 plan, the super plan that you've created, or the super ideology that you've created that you're trying to follow. And you're not really letting life just, you know, you're not embracing the actual life. Therefore, you're not free. You know, are you really at peace when you're following these plans? These plans to that dictate your life as far as, you know, where it goes. Are you free? Are you at peace? I think that's the number one thing is peace. Is whatever plan that you're choosing, is it really bringing you peace? A lot of times, what's the answer? No. 
you know, we have this plan that we have to do this, 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 this. It has to be super tight. We have to be super, super disciplined. And, you know, we can't look to the left. We can't look to the right. We can't fall off. We got to stay hard. You know, all the things we've heard. And yet, some of the beautiful magic that's ever happened was when we took those leaps out of faith and we just jumped and we were uncertain about what the outcome would be. And then the outcome turned out beautiful, better than we could imagine, right? How many times have we said that? Something turned out better than we could have imagined. That's because what you imagined was what controlled your outcome. But when you let go of that controlled outcome or that controlled desire, the universe was able to bring in something that was much more worthy of you. Hence what we say, X, Y, Z turned out better than we could have imagined. You know, when you go on vacation and you don't necessarily have an itinerary, and you say, we're uncertain about what we're going to do, but we know we're going to have fun. When you set your intentions on having fun, guess what happens? You say, oh, the vacation was awesome. It turned out better than we could have imagined. Why? Because you let yourself blow in the wind of life. You let life, you know what I'm saying, move you through. Especially, and it's more beautiful, like I said, when you set your intentions. I think that's the one of the biggest takeaways is when you're moving in life with this uncertainty, you have to have your intentions straight. And not necessarily a gun hold desire, but your intentions are how you want to feel. When you say, because the universe is always taking orders. So when the universe is taking orders, how is it not going to fulfill your order? You know? So like I said, uncertainty leads to a path of freedom. It allows you to live life. It allows you to really embrace what life could bring you. It's almost like the more we want to have control, the less control we have. So why not give up control? Again, the more control that we try to have, it seems like we lose more and more of that control. You know, haven't you noticed like a kid, let's put it like that, a kid. You might have a kid or a cousin, a nephew, a niece, somebody younger, you know. And they're, they're bad. Or they don't want to study. You know, something something that we see may hold them back. So we try to control them. We try to apply a lot of pressure. You need to do this. Da, 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 da. You know, really, really stay on them. Really try to control them. Or a parent tries to really control their kid's future by education. You know, you have to go to school, get a good grades, da, da, da. You have to study, study, study. You know, they try to really, really control them. Instead of like guide them and let the universe do the work. And they really try to control them. And what happens? The kids rebel. The kids just rebel. That's what happens when you put too much control on something. You lose control. The kids rebel. How many times have we seen that? Where the parents really try to dictate or be forceful or be super in the kids' lives or super controlling, what happens? The kids rebel. Some kind of way, the kids rebel. Because that's not natural. So then what happens after that when the kids rebel? Either the parents double down, they rebel more, or the parents back off. You know, when parents back off, the kids are now able to just move and let life take them. So they might have made mistakes or whatever the case may be. But eventually what happens? Everything pans out correctly. The kids finally find their way. And then what did they say? When I was a kid, I was bad. I was rebellious. Da, 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 da. Now look at it. When people finally let go of that control and leave an uncertainty of how their kid is going to turn out. Haven't you noticed some parents who are not super controlling with their kids and they're uncertain about their kids you know like they, they know their kids are good people but they're uncertain about where the kids might go and all this there's no pressure applied they just 
tell the kids be a good person. And a lot of times out of 10, what happens? That kid does something astronomical. It happens every time. Because now you're allowing that brain to run free, that kid's brain to run free with no control on it. You're allowing the universe to do its job now. You might be putting limitations on someone whose abilities stretch further than you could imagine. Again, sometimes we may be putting limitations on people that may be holding them back from what they can truly be. I'm gonna speak for myself because I know the controlling aspect because I've been there front row where the outcome of my life has been, has been, well, the outcome of my life has been wanting to be controlled by a third party. And I didn't like that spirit. I didn't like that being placed upon me. So I rebelled. Now, I'm a rebellious person. But I rebelled. Come to find out, this is why I say this, the limitations that was placed upon me, the outcome of what I could have reached was far more greater than what the limitations that was put on me. Again, the limitations that was put upon myself, I could have reached something far more greater. Therefore, this is why I knew the limitations that was being placed upon me was holding me back. What if you tell this person that they, you know, just can be a teacher, and yet this person could heal, heal the whole world in some other sort of way? Well, this person is just good enough to be a doctor, yet they could be the best movie star. The average doctor versus the greatest movie star. You know? That's why we can't put control on things. Especially people. We have to let people be people. Be uncertain about what may happen. But have the hope, have the faith that it turns out beautiful. But don't have, be so gun hole on control. Be uncertain. Live in the uncertainty. Because when you're uncertain about things, especially like if you're in a relationship or you have kids or, you know, because that's a relationship with your kids, any sort of relationship or anything like that. If you're uncertain about the outcome, guess what happens? Now, you're forced to embrace the day. Carpe diem. You're forced to seize the day. Carpe diem. You're forced to. When you're uncertain, you're forced to embrace. You're forced to enjoy. If you understand the value of life, if you understand that things are uncertain, you're forced to embrace it. If you look at, if you put it as if, if you're uncertain that you may live tomorrow, what do you do? You embrace today. If you knew today might have been your last day, you embrace the day wholeheartedly. So it's the same thing with, with life. And living in uncertainty. If you're uncertain that you may see your girlfriend tomorrow, or you're uncertain that the relationship might not work out, or you're uncertain about this, or you're uncertain about your job, guess what you do? You embrace it fully. If you're uncertain that your job may not be the one, or your job may not pay you what you need, what do you do? You double down and you go work for yourself, or you go find a better job. You know? Whichever way the universe guides you when you talk to it. Like I said, there's beauty in uncertainty. And the reason why I say there's beauty in uncertainty is because you're leaving that window for God. I remember Quincy Jones said something while I'm a, I'm a big music head, big, 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 big music head. If you know something about me, music player, I don't want to say that type of stuff right now because people don't really know me, so I want to keep that portion of my life, you know, quiet. <clears throat> but 
I was watching the do- watching the documentary on Thriller, you know Michael Jackson's Thriller, and Quincy Jones said, "Sometimes you have to leave a little portion open for God when you're making music. Sometimes you have to leave the door open, leave a little portion open for God." And he was just explaining how some things, certain things, while he was making the album, was uncertain. How some things was just an accident. How certain things was just, boom, universe just provided, God just provided. So I say this. That uncertainty, that's God. And that's saying uncertain in God. We're uncertain about what's God going, to, what God is going to do. You see. So that uncertainty is that you allowing God to have His hand in it. You see. See, when you're when you're super certain, you're a hundred percent. You know, you don't allow God in. When you're super certain of your plan, when you leave that little window open, now you allow God in. And something magical can happen. No, not even something magical can happen. Something magical will happen. Like I said, I honestly believe when you set your intentions, I'm, I'm going to scratch that out. I know when you set your intentions. And you have faith. And you lead in that faith but you're uncertain about the outcome and you're confident, but you're uncertain, that's when beautiful things happen. Point blank period. When you set your sights on something so much and you try to control it, even when it's not the one for you or the thing for you, you're gonna still try to control it because that's the picture that you painted in your head and you're so tight on it. Then now it's doing you just this justice. Live in uncertainty sometimes. Like I say, even in relationships. You're uncertain how something's going to turn out. Don't put any anything on it. Embrace it as the day. And, we'll, and go through the mindset, whatever happens, happens. Do your best and that's it. Do your best and leave the rest. That's my philosophy on things like relationships. Do your best and leave the rest. How many times have we been in a relationship where the other party tries to control it so much? It has to look good. It has to feel good. You know, it has to be the ideal textbook, what all the videos told you, what all the fake YouTube gurus told you. And I say, I say fake YouTube gurus, not every... Not everybody on these platforms are spewing lies or spewing just BS. Some people are telling the truth, but I feel like a lot of people who have a mass following, you have to, you know, you have to check them because it's past a certain point. People are saying anything to keep their views up, keep their check up. So you have to double check people, triple check people. But yeah, who go with what all the YouTube gurus saying all that? When you live in your relationship with those points, you don't get to fully embrace the relationship. You're trying to control it so much. But when you just say, hmm, whatever happens, happens. You're uncertain about the outcome. I don't know if it's gonna go good. I don't know if it's gonna go bad. I don't know if we're gonna stay together forever. I don't know if this is gonna be for two weeks. So because of that, and because you want to that thing to last forever, but you're not putting pressure on it, what do you do? When you don't have control or you release that control, you just take it day by day. You embrace it. You're okay with the outcome. You're at peace with the outcome. You're thankful that you've gotten this far. The universe pays attention to all that. The universe pays attention to all that. When you just say, hey, whatever happens, happens. I'm at peace. I'm thankful for this correspondence. If it goes good, cool. If not, that's life. Life will bring something else. Who knows what's on the other side? You know, and that allows you to really enjoy a person, a thing, a place. Instead of trying to control it so much. 
Because now the universe is saying, well, why are you trying to control this thing so much? What's going on? Is it coming from a lack? Is it coming from a state of lack? Where is it coming from? So indirectly, now the universe is going to punish you. Because you try to have so much control. And especially control over people. I promise you, the universe don't like that. Because we don't own people. We can just enjoy people. We can embrace people. We can be with people. But we don't own people. And we have to remember that. And I think the more and more we try to control people, it's the more the universe sees that and doesn't like it. And the more the universe will try to control, we, the more we try to control people, the universe will throw, you know what I'm saying, rocks on our plan. Especially if you have a divine mission. Or especially if you're innocent. Or especially if you're just trying to live your life. If you're trying to live your life and somebody's trying to control you, the universe is going to throw rocks in that person's plan. I promise you. It has to happen. Because we don't own people. In a sense, God owns us. The universe owns us. We don't own people. It's not our plan. And I said, there's wisdom and uncertainty. There's so much wisdom and uncertainty. It's like, um, what do they say? This, the person who knows something knows he knows nothing. Or the smart man knows he knows nothing. But the fool thinks he knows everything. See, the smart man understands that he knows nothing. So he allows his mind to be open. and embrace what can may be able to come in. On the other hand, the person who knows thinks they know everything, they cut off. So now they don't allow things in. So they don't move with uncertainty like the first person does. Because the first person may know something, but they don't necessarily move in it because they're not going to Because they understand that if they place all their eggs in that one basket based off of what they're thinking and not allowing the universe to show them, they've not put themselves in a predicament or a box. Versus the person who may jump to conclusions or may think they know and this and this and this. They pigeonhole themselves. And I said, sometimes you got to let go of these expectations. That's a, that's a big part of it. That's why we end up frustrated. That's why we end up depressed, anxiety. Because we try to be so certain. But if you just release and embrace yourself in that release, that release of not knowing, that release of letting go, and just set your intentions on, I'm going to be at peace. You're telling the universe, I want to be at peace. I want to be happy. I want to be abundant. When you're giving these demands to the universe and you release control, it's like you put in your Amazon order. That's literally what it is. It's like, remember when we didn't have tracking? This is a perfect example. Remember when we didn't have tracking? Where you could check track your package. So when you placed your order, you were uncertain about when it was gonna come. And you were just basking in the uncertainty. You were just basking in the anticipation. You were just happy, you were giddy. All you were doing was thinking about what you were gonna do when this thing came in, how much fun you were gonna have, or how you're gonna utilize it, whatever the case may be. You know, you couldn't you couldn't wait. All that anticipation, all that excitement was built up because you weren't certain about when it was gonna come. Now we have tracking. So what do we do now? 
We try to check, track the package every five minutes. We try to control it. We try to wonder, can we pick it up? You know, we're always looking, where is it, where is it, where is it? Now we don't have peace. Now that excitement about what is going to come and what we're going to do with it is ruined because now all we're thinking about is when it's going to come. That control of when it's going to come, instead of it being released, and now when you release it, you're embracing the life part of it, which is thinking and hoping and dreaming and letting that run wild about what you're going to do when that thing comes in. Because you know it's on the way. So you've released that part of your mind, of that anxiety part. It's the same thing with life. You know you put in your order with the universe, right? You know you put in your, your order of you want peace, patience, love, abundance, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. You want all these things, right? Okay. So now you don't, when is it on the way? When is it? When is it coming? When is it coming? And try to force it to control it. You don't do all that. What do you do? You sit back and you now you enjoy life. Because you know you put in your order. You can't rush it. How many times have we tried to rush things and it ended up bad? How many times? Every time. Every time you try to rush something, it ends up bad. Every time you try to rush a relationship, what happens? It ends up bad. Instead of embracing that uncertainty, because when you embrace that uncertainty, now you allow yourself this to be. I'm uncertain if this is going to work out, so I'm just going to make the best of it. How many times have we said that? I'm uncertain about how this is going to turn out, so I'm just going to make the best of it. And then when you turn around and make the best of it and embrace it as it comes, it turns out better than we could have imagined. You know, the best relationships are the ones where you throw your hands up and say, forget it. I'm just do whatever. I'm just go as the wind goes. I'm not going to set any, you know, parameters. I'm not going to set, oh, it has to be like this. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just let go and let God take the will. That's really what it is. Let go and let God take the will. That's literally what it is. When you're uncertain about things, you let go and you let God take the will. And he can do a much better job than we can. I'm telling you, when you have that, when you're uncertain, that strengthens your faith so much more. Like I said, you're putting your faith, you're putting your strength, you're putting your trust in the higher being. When you're, putting your, when you're putting all that in the divine, you're putting your trust in something higher. Now that relieves the pressure of you. The divine can handle all that. It's not our mission to. It's our mission just to breeze through life. That's it, just breeze through life. The, the divine can handle that pressure. That's why we need to release control to the divine. Let the divine handle it. The divine will bring so many beautiful things and lead us to, down so many beautiful paths that we could never imagine if we had control. Like I said, there's power in being uncertain about things. Look at, look at, look at the birds. I always say, look at the birds. I'm pretty sure they're uncertain about where they're going to eat, but they just go with it. Everything out here goes with the flow but us. And that's why I always come back to is intelligence a downfall? Or is intelligence only a downfall if it's not catered to properly? I sometimes think intelligence is a downfall. But then again, I also think it's only a downfall if we just rely on intelligence and not faith. And I think this is one of those things when it comes to uncertainty. 
where if you utilize intelligence and faith and uncertainty, the outcome can be beautiful. But you have to understand how to use them all. And not just rely on your intelligence. And that's what a lot of us do and a lot of us miss out on life because of that. So, the wisdom of uncertainty. Sometimes let uncertainty into your life and your life can turn out much more beautiful than you would have imagined. Good talk today. Again, episode 20 of Rich Talks. This your favorite cousin, Rich. Hope y'all have a blessed day. Y'all be safe. Love and blessings.